some of you have asked us, can a game which includes randomness ever really work as an eSport? The simple answer is, yes, we just have to think about how we set up our tournaments differently. The longer answer is the rest of the episode, I guess. Okay, so people ask this question because the stakes for the eSports community are actually pretty high. On the one hand, you have the integrity of skill-based play. The more randomness there is in a game, the more opportunity there is for the better player to lose. And if the better player loses, is your game really a test of skill or merely a game of luck? But on the other hand, you have the inclusion or exclusion of a ton of games at stake. Since it's even easier to include random elements into a game's design in the digital world than in the physical one, because you can have a CPU do all the calculating, many of our favorite video games include randomness to some degree. So that's the standard formulation of the problem, but viewing it this way sort of sets up a false opposition. Almost every game that exists includes some random elements. I mean, we've all seen games of League or Dota, where a critical hit at just the right moment could have turned a team fight, but the dice just didn't come up right that time. Or how about Go? Go is considered one of the most symmetrical, most skill-based competitive games in the world, and yet, for years, having the first turn was considered such an advantage that one professional player even quipped that all he needed to be assured victory was to pull the black stone. Even in physical sports, we see things that are functionally random affect play all the time. Did a gust of wind at the wrong moment turn an easy out into an error in an infield home run? Did the star player choose the wrong dish at the sushi restaurant last night and he's now sitting out of the key game laid up by food poisoning? Clearly, it's not a matter of whether or not there is randomness in a game that makes it a good sport, but rather how we address that randomness in order to make sure we highlight skill rather than simply chance. And for this, we should look to poker. Few people in the esports community would deny that poker is a sport, that it has a completely legitimate and vibrant competitive scene, that the most skilled players in the poker world rise to the top, and that there is a real difference between the folks who compete in the world championship of poker and the fish sitting at your local card game. And yet, poker is perhaps one of the most random games out there. On any given hand, it's completely possible that the worst player at your local poker night beats out one of the all-stars. But that's not how you play poker, and therein lies the problem of how we're thinking about esports. You see, most objections to the idea of a game with random elements being considered a sport are still rooted in the any given hand type of thinking. They're a little bit stuck in the mindset that an individual match is how you determine skill. But that's not true for games with random elements. A poker game isn't a chess match. Because of the randomness inherent in the game, the results of a single hand in poker tell you far less about a player's skill than a single game of chess. Instead, in poker, you have to look at a much larger sampling. In a poker tournament, players may well play thousands of hands. On any given hand, the cards may turn against them, and the opponent may find a lucky river or pull a 5% out, but over a thousand games, all that randomness evens out. They are just as likely to find that luck as their opponents, and their skill at the game means that they know what risks to take and how to capitalize on them. This translates into how much a player wins and how often they take home the pot. And so in the end, the players with the most skill clearly shine through. This is because poker is a game of EV, or expected value. Unlike in chess, poker players can't be sure of the absolute value of any move, but the best players find all the tiny ways to up their win percentage. And this is even more true in games like Hearthstone. A player who can really think through the cards in their deck and what their opponent might have, rather than simply playing against what's on the board, will make all sorts of minor adjustments to their play to maximize their chance of winning. And herein lies the skill to the game. The difference between a player who's stuck at rank 5 and one who's in the top 16 in the world is simply the difference between a player who's consistently winning 50% of the time and one who's consistently winning 80% of the time. But eking out that extra 30% takes a world of skill. So there can be plenty of skill in games that include randomness. The question is simply how to highlight this in our tournaments. The first thing we have to do is move away from single elimination. And when I see Hearthstone tournaments where a player is eliminated after losing two hands, I sort of just have to chuckle and agree with all the detractors because that's well within variance. It's very possible that the better player drew poorly twice and that skill didn't win out at all. Instead, these tournaments should be round robin style. Each player should play every other player in the tournament, and the player with the highest win percentage should be declared the victor. Better still, if you want to ensure that these games focus on skill, play them as leagues with play taking place over the course of months, where dozens if not hundreds of games get to play out, so that the randomness shrinks from being a dice roll to being a calculable estimation. What the right tournament style is, or how exactly we should structure our competitions, may vary from game to game, but in the end, there are plenty of ways to change our tournament structure to ensure that victory is a demonstration of skill rather than the luck of the draw, even in games that feature randomness as an element of play. Most importantly though, if we want esports to continue to grow and thrive, we shouldn't simply throw out all these incredible competitive games that happen to use randomness simply because we're looking at competition too narrowly. And with that, I say good luck and believe in the heart of the cards. We'll see you next week.